Right now, the Ecuadorian national team is getting sandwiched by a pair of two scandals that some people are hoping will eliminate them from the Qatar World Cup. We're going to jump into those right now, but before we do that, if you like content like this about not just Ecuador, but any Bowl nation, make sure you hit that subscribe button because we are probably the only place on the internet you will find stuff like this, especially in English. I mean, this is tough, guys. My Spanish... It's, it's really getting tested finding all the information for you guys today, so I really appreciate a subscribe and a like on the video if you could do that for me. Thank you. Let's get into this. The first scandal is about star man Byron Castillo. Now, this situation is a little messed up, and I just want to preface everything by saying it seems like these situations are evolving on a day-to-day -day basis. What I say in this video may be proved completely factually incorrect in the court of law by tonight. I don't know. Byron Castillo, there was a screenshot that was posted to Twitter. Twitter by some Colombian journalist uh, who claimed to have a copy, a photocopy of Byron Castillo's birth certificate that claimed two things. One, that he's actually born in 1995, not 1998. So he'd be three years older than he is officially listed as. And the second thing is that he was born in Colombia. He was born in Tumaco Nariño, which is some coastal area slash town pretty close to the Ecuadorian border, but it still does lie within Colombia. Now, I probably don't need to tell you that you're not allowed to field players from a different nation on your national team. Most of you guys probably know that's not, <laughs> that doesn't fall within the uh, FIFA rules and regulations. So what would that mean? Well, pretty much any game that Byron Castillo is involved in technically could be a forfeit, which means Ecuador would lose all the points that they had from those matches, and three points would go to whoever they played against. And I saw, not surprisingly, that if this happened, Ecuador would finish last in the table because you can't take zero points from eight games. I mean, ask Venezuela. This tweet was getting spread like wildfire on Twitter, and I'm not surprised by that because, of course, if you're Chilean or Colombian, you want nothing more than this to be true because you want to go to the World Cup. And so you want Byron Castillo and Ecuador to be disqualified so that Peru can, I think, would slide up to that, that fourth spot. And then I'm not sure if it was Chile or Colombia, one of those teams would slide up to five, most likely. You probably had some Italians as well across the pond like, wait a minute. So there's a chance. No, there's not a chance because Ecuador has responded and they have actually claimed somewhat morbidly that this document that this Colombian guy tweeted out is actually the birth certificate of Byron Castillo's deceased older brother, Byron Castillo. The only thing that's funny about this is when I saw the screenshot, I was like, wait a minute, it says Byron Castillo, not Byron Castillo. And I guess you could say like, oh, he just changed his name, but like, if you're going to change your name, right? Like I'm not going to change my name from Jack to Jackson. Y you know what I mean? Like if I'm trying to if I'm trying to change my identity so that the feds can't catch me, I'm going to change it to Luke or something like that. I'm not going to change it to Jackson. If I'm Baron Castillo and I'm trying to change my identity so that I can play for Ecuador, I mean my first name is going to be like Javier or something like that. Okay. It's not going to be Byron. I'm not just going to like cut out one letter from my name. So I remember I saw that and I was like, this evidence looks a little whack. And apparently that's what it was. Nothing more. Evidence that some lawyer had put forth in the case uh, trying to prove that Byron Castillo was not Ecuadorian. So the journalist who posted this actually had to walk back his statement and apologize and say, oh, I shouldn't have spoken about a case, which the case may be ongoing as well. And he basically was just like, oh, my bad. Uh, and now everybody's dealing with this absolute shitstorm that's been left in his tweet's wake. So thank you for that, sir. Apparently, Ecuador has also put forth a document that is actually Byron Castillo's real birth certificate, which shows that he was born in Guayas in, in Ecuador and that he is an Ecuadorian citizen. What's super messed up for me is that, you know, it's his deceased older brother, you know, and it's getting brought up in court. Now it's all it's bustling all over on social media. It's got to be really uncomfortable for Byron Castillo to be seeing that. I mean, I, obviously, it's, it's, it's very grim. Um, you know, I hope that this situation doesn't affect how Ecuadorian fans treat him during games. And I really hope that other combable rivals don't use this against him, but they will. You know, there's some chants coming. There's some banners coming. Absolutely, for sure. You can bet your ass that's, that's incoming at the next Copa America. I guess the one part of this I don't understand is that to become a nationalized player... Typically, you have to live in the country for five years. And Byron Castillo has been playing for, like, the, the U-16s for almost eight years now. 
and, and I think his club career within Ecuador has been the exact same length of time. So I don't really know why this would matter, you, you know? I mean, okay, maybe he was born in Colombia, but if he's already been nationalized because he's been there for so long and he's been representing Ecuador, I don't really see the problem with this. I feel like a lot of hype is being built around this because, well, there are other countries that want to go to the World Cup. And if Byron Castillo is disqualified and Ecuador deducted points, that would mean that Chile or Colombia or maybe even Italy would go through to the World Cup. If that wasn't bad enough, Ecuador have also been caught in this doping scandal where apparently some Ecuadorian doping agency, uh, you know, some branch of the sports ministry within Ecuador was basically like, hey, the government hasn't given us the money and the resources we need to effectively um, test the players. So they're not going to meet the World Anti-Doping Agency regulations to be cleared to play in international tournaments and if this doesn't happen then they're going to be banned from two international tournaments which would include the world cup and some other tournament that nobody cares about a lot of people online took this as oh the ecuadorian national team is doping and that's why they qualified for qatar that is not true to my knowledge i couldn't find a single thing online that said somebody on the team failed the drug test i mean i know gonzalo plata runs really fast but from what i've found that's just that's just genetics and putting in work in the gym. It has nothing to do with pills that he's popping before the game. So there's no proof that they failed the test. They just might not also have passed the test because there might not have been a test, if you get what I'm saying. You can't fail a test you don't take. Honestly, Ecuador is playing 4D chess here. Since then, though, people within the Ecuadorian government, possibly even Alfaro himself, came out and said, hey, don't worry about it. We're going to send you the money. You're going to get what you need. We're going to get everybody tested. We are going to the World Cup. Don't try to mess this up for us. I'm sure this is going to evolve on a day-to-day -day basis. So if somebody does fill a drug test tomorrow, you know, I bet somebody's going to post in the comments like, wow, you dumbass, like you're biased. Everybody failed. They're all a bunch of cheaters. That may be true. But as of this moment, as of the moment I am recording this in front of my camera, nobody has failed a drug test. That could change. Absolutely could change. I don't know. I mean, I would be devastated if it was. I don't want to see Ecuador get kicked out of the World Cup. I think they're going to be one of the most exciting teams there. But it could happen. Hope it doesn't. Um, but yeah, don't don't come back to the video in three months when you know Arboleda fails a drug test or something and then try to clown me. I didn't know, dude. Okay, I'm I'm just reading what I can limitedly understand with my conversational level of Spanish. I'm doing the best I can. I don't see Ecuador getting kicked out of the World Cup. I think it's a lot of wishful thinking from a lot of you know, hungry Chileans and Colombians. And I can understand how they would be upset at this. Obviously, if it's, if it's proven that they were taking drugs that helped them perform, I can understand that. However, if I'm looking at Chile and, and Colombia, like to be frank, they didn't deserve to go to the World Cup. They didn't play well enough. That's why they finished sixth and seventh place. That's why they're not going to Qatar. I don't really think it's fair to kind of jump on this bandwagon until we have more facts because the fact of the matter is you lost too many games to go. The fact of the matter is Colombia got slapped 6-1 by Ecuador, and that's why they're not going to the World Cup. It's not because Estupiñan may or may not have done Adderall before one of the qualifiers. Now, if he did do Adderall before one of the games, that's, that's not fair, and he should face consequences for that. But the team should not be kicked out of the World Cup if one player fails a drug test. And I would feel this way regardless of who the team was. I mean, there's not many national teams that I really have disdain for. But if there was, I still think it would be harsh to kick out the entire team if one guy was found out that he was taking PEDs. I just think that's too much. This, this event means too much to, to everybody around the world. Every Ecuadorian is looking forward to this. They completely deserved it based on how they played. They were, they were my favorite team to watch throughout the qualifying process. They deserve to be in Qatar, and everybody deserves to see these guys at Qatar. You know what? Chile, Colombia, they will get their chance next World Cup. I'd be shocked if one of them didn't make it next go around. That's all I have to say about this. You guys let me know what you think about these double scandals hitting Ecuador right now down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave it a like because it takes a lot of effort to find this stuff in English, bruv. I'm telling you. My Spanish is getting way better because I got to read all these articles in Spanish, then try to understand it. Then I got to switch back to my the English side of my brain so that I can speak into this microphone. It's a lot of work. A like on the video would be much appreciated. Go follow us over on Twitter at YankFootballPod if you want to see our thoughts on all the latest footballing news around the world. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.